church, would you stand to your feet? Let's sing.
morning, church. Welcome, it's good to be here with you all. Love just getting the opportunity to sing these Christmas carols with you guys. Um, my name is Hannah, if you don't know me. Um, I'm just glad to be here with you. And I'm just excited for what this service holds for us. I believe that there is a reason that we're all here in this room. I believe that God wants to use the music, the, the message, every part of this to speak to you and to speak to me this morning. There's a reason that we are here. And so we've got another uh, few worship songs that we're gonna sing through and then Pastor Jay is gonna bring the message. So we've got a good service ahead. And before we move on, I just wanted to read um, a Psalm of Praise. Uh, Psalm 95, starting in verse one, it says, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to him. For the Lord is a great God, a great King above all gods. Let's pray and then we'll continue in worship. God, I thank you for this opportunity to be here in this room worshiping you take this moment to welcome you in this room, to welcome your spirit. Lord, I pray that you would begin to speak to us even now during the worship and later as we read your word, Lord, speak to us. I pray that you would prepare our hearts for what you want to say to us. It's in your name we pray. Amen.
Let's pray. God, I thank you that you sent your son who would be the king forever, that we have a person that will never leave us, never forsake us, but you are always there. I pray that as the sermon continues, God, that you're just gonna be in all of it. I pray that your spirit will lead and your power will just empower us even through this Christmas season, God, because this is for you and your son, and we celebrate and honor you today. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. Good morning, church. You excited to be here? Amen. Well, you can go ahead and have a seat. We got a few announcements that we want to give to you. But before we do that, who was excited to wake up to snow? Yeah, let me, okay, we got some non-grinchy people out there. For the rest of you Scrooges, I hope you come around. Uh, no, just kidding. I know snow is not everybody's cup of tea, but it's almost Christmas. This time next week, it will be Christmas. And in relation to Christmas, I have some scheduling things for you. So get your calendars out. Get ready. Get, just get prepared for that. But while you're doing that, while you're getting your calendars ready for some date changes, I want to welcome you if you are a guest. Can we welcome all of our guests in the room? We are so very excited that you are here. If you don't know me, if you're seeing me for the first time, my name is Josh Hall. I have the privilege and opportunity to be the children's pastor here at the Oakmont campus. Um, and so that's awesome. We are glad that you are here. If you are here for the first time, you can look in the seat back in front of you and you'll find a whole bunch of stuff, information, uh, invite cards, all kinds of things so that we can stay in touch with you. So if you would do us the honor of filling that out, we would greatly appreciate that. And in order to keep up with all the things that we have going on here at Riverside, you can download our app. You can find it in the App Store, whether you have an iPhone or all of you weird people that have Androids. We also have stuff on the Android Store, too. Love you all. No, I'm really making enemies today. I'm calling people Scrooge, uh, making fun of people who got Androids. I love you all. I really do. Please don't come after me. Uh, I'm not your enemy. So uh, you can get our app and you can find all of our events on there, past messages, all kinds of stuff to stay up to date with what we're doing here at Riverside. And so here, here we go. Here are the dates that I've been telling you about. We got some date things coming up, date changes. So Christmas Eve, everybody say Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. We will have services here at 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. So services here at Oakmont will be at 11 o'clock in the morning and 5 p.m. at night. And services, if you would like to attend our Mills campus, or if you just want to go to all four Christmas Eve services, you can go to the Mills at 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. So our times are staggered. So if you really want to come to Oakmont, 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. If you show up at 9 a.m., you're going to be helping us get stuff together for the 11 o'clock service. Uh, so 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. at the Mills, 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. at Oakmont. And then Christmas Day, which is the next day, so that's Saturday, Christmas Day, next Sunday, we will have online services only. So if you show up, if you're one of those people that didn't raise your hand for like in the snow, you don't want to show up that Sunday because you're going to be outside in the cold alone uh, while everybody's at home in their PJs watching service. So we will have online services for the adults and for the kids as well. So if you have kids, you can lo uh, log on to our YouTube page and get a service for them as well. And then New Year's Day, we will have one service at 10 a.m. One service at 10 a.m. So we got our Christmas Eve services, online service on Christmas Day, and then New Year's Day, one service at 10 a.m. You got all that? Yeah. You good? Yeah. If you show up at 9 a.m. on Christmas or, or New Year's, <laughs> it's not going to be great. So we hope you will join us for those things. It's going to be awesome. We love you all. And now I will stop talking and making enemies and offending people. Uh, and I'm going to pass it over to Pastor Jay, who has an incredible message for us this morning.
Well, good morning. Welcome, so glad that you're here, and today is uh, part four of our series, Unfading, and we're talking about unfading peace, which I guess is the reason why Pastor Josh decided to come up here and pick a fight with all you guys. <laughs> Just a living, living illustration. Um, no, uh, we're uh, excited, I'm excited to share this message with you, and if you've missed uh, over the last couple of weeks, I encourage you to go online. You can check out those messages at both campuses um, as we've been uh, talking about un- unfading love and unfading hope, and I encourage you to check those out. Um, but today, um, and this idea of unfading, I was thinking about it uh, this last week um, as I was out. I was out at a used bookstore here in the area, and... <clears throat> looking for gifts for myself. Um, and uh, how many of you are really good at getting gifts? Like you love, you have a gift for gift giving, right? All right, cool. Uh, how many of you like to restrain the people in your family that have that gift? You're like, hey, stop, stop. Yeah, that's all right. Um, so, uh, but I was there and I was actually looking for um, a few stocking stuffers too. And um, I saw this game, and my kids play video games, um, PlayStation, and um, I saw this game, and it's Madden 19, all right? So every year they put out a Madden game. Yeah. And this one here caught my attention for a couple reasons. First of all, it has a ex-Pittsburgh Steeler on it, Antonio <laughs> Brown. Um, and they say there's a curse if you get this, if you get this be on the front of it, like you're going to get injured or something happens, well... He's no longer even playing in the NFL, so, um, but I saw this black and gold, and, I, and, and then asked how much it was, and it was a dollar. <laughs> Three years ago, this was $70. So, um, yeah, and I thought about it, I was like, you know, what a great illustration about unfading. The things, in, uh, uh, the things that many of the gifts that we give you know, a little bit over time, you know, their value, their worth, usefulness, it'll, it'll fade. It'll fade. But the things we celebrate because of Jesus, they don't fade, including peace. And um, I want to take a moment and <clears throat> I want to look first in the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 10 through 14. This verse just popped into my heart for, for peace that I wanted to start out with. It says, Uh, This is the angel announcing to the shepherds Jesus' birth. says, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes. And lying in a manger, suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appear with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. Let me pray for just a moment. Lord, we thank you so much for your peace, and um, I pray, God, that you would just open our hearts, Lord, for what you have for us. Lord, I know you want to speak truth into our hearts, and I know you, wanna, um, you want peace to rest on, on the chaos that's going on around us or maybe in us. So, Lord, let that begin right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I love this peace on earth, this peace to those on whom his favor rests. And, you know, when you, um, when, if you're out and about at, at all, during this season, in this last week or two, uh, if you go to any area, whether a grocery store, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, a Walmart or anything, it's crazy, right? It's like, it's anything but peace. I I saw a Riversider about a week ago, and and we were out in the Mills area, and, and we're like both getting gas, and we're like, just can't wait to get home and get out of all this. It's so much craziness. And so it's very easy for us to lose sight of peace. Um, and, that, and, and in fact, when I was reflecting on this, <clears throat> I think about, um, as you see and you hear about the unrest and um, 
you see different things maybe uh, on social media, how somebody kind of loses their cool during this time. And I had to reflect back on a time when that happened to me. And this, uh, this happened last year uh, during Christmas time. We were visiting <clears throat> in the Midwest and uh, visiting family in Omaha, and we were uh, at a place that we like to go. Um, uh, it's called Pepper Jack's, and it's a place that makes Philly steaks in Omaha. Um, and no joke, it's like the one, the one I've, I've only had one Philly steak in Philly, and <clears throat> the one in Omaha was better. And so we like going there, and um, it's a true story. Uh, <laughs> And we like going there when we go back to visit. And we were in the line. And last year at this time, uh, pandemic was still very much um, kind of lingering. Um, and we went to uh, into this line. It was one of those lines, if you've been to a place like Chipotle or something like that, where you go through and they fix it right in front of you. Um, and we were in this line. There were several people in this line. Uh, and there was a partition on, on the side. So you kind of kind of tight space. And I recognized when we got up there, the person in front of us had a mask on, which I think is a good indicator, hey, this person may be an immune compromise, compromise, you know, but it was still a tight space. There's a lot of people there. As we were standing there in line, my son <clears throat> stepped forward towards the wall. They had all these old pictures of Omaha, and he wanted to get a closer look, and he stepped over to look at that and stepped about a half a step closer to this gentleman, and he was facing away. And, um, the guy caught my son in, in his peripheral, and he, and he kind of turned, and instead of backing away from him, he, he kind of rebuked my son, and he said, hey, can you stay out of my space? Stay out of my space. I, I need, you know, and, um, you know, it's one of those moments as a parent, um, I know my kids will be corrected, and the times so they'll need to be, but um, when it happens in front of you, you're like, eh, you know, it's, it's, it's uncomfortable, you know? <clears throat> but in my heart, I was like, um, I was like, don't say anything, don't say anything. You know, I want to defend him. I want to, you know, take it easy, you know, that kind of thing. But, you know, I had that, uh, that little song in Frozen, let it go, let it go. <laughs> just, just singing it, humming it, don't let this get to you. You know, we're having a good time. And uh, so in, in some ways, he stepped a lot farther away, and I stepped forward a little bit, and as we moved, we were almost up to the front. He started ordering his food, and I was right behind him now, this gentleman. And um, uh, as we were waiting and they were preparing our food, uh, it, was, it was going a little slow, but not that bad. And um, he steps over close to me, the same closeness as my son was, to talk to me. And, um, and, and began to complain about how slow the line and how the cooks were so slow. And, you know, it was one of those moments where um, maybe if, if I could step outside and watch myself, it'd be, you know when you're like up to the edge on something and then somebody gives you a nudge? <clears throat> and I was like, oh, man. I was like, no. You know, God's testing me, and I was at that, and I was like, this, this is not going to go well. And I, and, and I just kind of calmly just kind of, I tried to rationalize with him, just kind of like his hypocrisy that was happening there. And I didn't appreciate the, you know, complaining about, and they were right there in front of me, he was just complaining about him, and I was like, hey man, you know, you're, you know and, I, and I said a few things to him, um, and he did not respond, you know, like, oh yeah, he didn't receive it, he just came back at me, you know? <clears throat> and so, uh, you know, he actually got up closer to me. He said, does this bother you? And I said, no, it doesn't. But that's not the point, you know? And um, so we kind of went back and forth just, just for, you know, 15 seconds maybe. And, um, and I just, I tried to reason with him in an unreasonable situation. I said, just, you could do DoorDash and avoid all of this. Because there's people picking up DoorDashes. I was like, you could avoid all of this. And he, yeah, he, he was really flustered. And then the guy that was fixing our food put his hands out kind of like this. He said, hey, guys, guys, can we all just get along? <laughs> Seriously, that's exactly what he said. Can we all just get along? I'm like, yes, yes. And at that moment, I'm like, man, this is just such a bad idea to speak up. And we went back to our table and sat down. And with, I was with my father-in-law and my son. And, and my, I was filling my father-in-law and what happened because he, he was ahead of us. And... Um, and at that moment, Jackson was like, yeah, he was 
you know, he wasn't being, you know, nice or something like that, but dad, you really shouldn't have said anything to him. <laughs> it's like wisdom from a teenager. I said, you're right. I apologize to him. I apologize to the cooks. The guy had already left, but I, I think it's just one of those situations where um, when I think about losing my cool, we, we all have those moments, and sometimes it can be in these moments where we want to be celebrating with family, we want to be having peaceful times with family, and you could probably begin reflecting on some of those moments too. Um, hopefully it wasn't in a restaurant in public like me, but you, you have those moments, and um, it gets the best of you. And the, the war, the battlefield that we live in it's, it's difficult sometimes for us to find peace. And when I think about this, we're looking at the life of Peter. Peter lost his cool, too. And one of his worst moments was actually the night that Jesus was arrested. And he chose war in a moment that Jesus wanted to be peaceful, in a moment that Jesus had actually warned them was coming. Let's look at this in Luke chapter 22, verses 47 through 53. It says, while he was still speaking, a crowd came up, and the man who was called Judas, one of the 12, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When Jesus' followers saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, should we strike with our swords? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his right ear. We know from the book of John, this was Peter who did this. But Jesus answered, no more of this. And he touched the man's ear, and he healed him. You know, we all have situations where, when I think about this, I look at this scripture, where we want to pick up a sword and swing. We want to go to battle. You know, whether it's with our words, <clears throat> Um, typically it is with our words, our actions. We want to fight. We want to defend. We want to start swinging. Um, I had it in my mind. I was thinking about, um, you know, the swords that they were carrying were small swords. Um, and, uh, as someone who likes to be out in the outdoors and, and, and hunting and, and harvesting, uh, I, I had this idea of like, hey, they, they make these little things to kind of help clear brush and stuff like that. It's like a small sword. I could justify purchasing one of these for my, you know, like, hey, honey, I got to get one of these things for this sermon to show you and be like, this is what. And then I thought, you know, there's probably somewhere and, um, uh, that we have, you know, this many days without an accident. And I want to keep that streak going. So safety first. Um, but we all have situations, and maybe you have a situation in your life right now where you want to fight. You want to go to war. You want to go to war. And this is a, just such a great moment where Jesus steps forward and says, no more of this. The Prince of Peace. In a moment where he could call angels from heaven down to fight his battles for him. He says, no more of this. Peter's problem is he was looking for a fight. And he wanted, and here's, here's the key. As you look at the disciples, they still hadn't got everything that Jesus was saying to, to, to them. I mean, saying, hey, I'm going to have to go to the cross. The battle is the cross, is me dying for the sins of humanity and raising again on the third day. This has to happen. And in their mind, and in many other people's minds, it was like, no, Jesus, you're the king. You're going to come. You're going to overthrow Caesar, and we're going to win this battle. We're going to swing swords and make this happen. He wanted it his own way. Consider your toughest situation right now. Consider the situation in your life, in your family. Consider the situation in your workplace. Consider the difficult person in your life right now. And what are you wanting to do? Do you want your own way? Consider the battle that you're in. Maybe something that you feel like, I'm losing, and I want to start swinging. Do you want God's will or your own? Do you want a war or do you want peace? Unfading peace. Thankfully, Peter changed. 
He changed in a big way. After his failures, his failures, not just in this moment, but in the moments after that when he denied Jesus three times, just as Jesus Jesus told him he would do, Peter changed dramatically. Full of the Holy Spirit, he embraced Jesus' mission of peace. If you read the book of Acts, you see a man who's on fire for Jesus and his mission of saving the lost and taking new ground, not by swinging a sword, but by declaring hope, love, and unfading peace. He talks about this, the necessity of this in our Christian life in 1 Peter 3, verses 8 through 12. I want to look at this just for a moment here. It says, finally, all of you should be of one mind, sympathize with each other, love each other as brothers and sisters, be tenderhearted and keep a a humble attitude. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. That is what God has called you to do. He will grant you his blessing. For the scriptures say, if you want to enjoy life and see many happy days, keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good work. Search for peace. And work to maintain it. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right. And his ears are open to their prayers. But the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. I love the word search in this scripture. I think we're searching, searching, searching for peace, searching for purpose, We are all on this journey. I don't know where you are. Maybe you're in a place in your life right now and you're searching for one of those things. This peace that that Jesus offers that is unfading, that transcends all understanding he offers to you today, whether it's a situation in your life or maybe it's where you are with God right now, that he wants to bring peace There's a lot of people who are searching for more than gifts right now. We've all been on that mission before where you're searching for a certain gift that somebody wants, and you can't find it at this store or that store. You can't find it online. You're asking people, would you please go out? I'm looking for this one thing. Fact is, the unfading peace of Jesus Christ is one of the best gifts that you can receive this season. The reality is people really need gifts that last. People really need gifts that last. John 14, 27, it says, I am leaving you with a gift. Jesus telling his disciples this before he goes to to the cross. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. You will not find peace anywhere else but Jesus. Not lasting peace. Sometimes there are things that we go through and we find other ways. You're looking for other ways to numb. You're looking for other ways to help you forget. And yet Jesus offers you this peace for your life, for your struggle for your family, for your home, a peace that lasts, that transcends all understanding. There's a battle going on. There's battles going on in your lives, and Jesus extends this peace to you, this gift I give to you. Peace of mind and heart. So how do we search for peace? How do, we, how do we find this peace in the middle of a battlefield? How do we do this? You know, um, I was thinking about this, and I love history. I, 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 many times I default to looking into history for illustrations. And in 1914, um, Christmas 1914, the Great War was upon this, this earth, which is, it was, was raging in France and in Germany and World War I. And the first Christmas of this war, there was something kind of amazing that happened. And what happened on Christmas Eve um, was peace. 
a day without fighting, a day where they were battling in the trenches, and anybody that got up, poked their head up out of the trenches, would be shot at. But something happened as one side began to sing, sing Christmas hymns. The other side began to as well. This is um, depicted in a movie called uh, Joye Noel, which is a uh, European movie, uh, 2015. It's also been covered by the History Channel, but I found a really good clip that I want to show you of what happened. This, this is a true story. This happened Christmas 1914 in the middle of World War I. I want you to take a look right now. My name is Jim. My name is Otto. Pleased to meet you, Otto. Freut mich. Rose, she's gone. And soon, I'm just soon. Good. <clears throat> you know, the beauty of this is that peace was possible on the battlefield. Peace was possible in the trenches. The tragedy is that peace didn't last. In fact, it took four bloody years of war before the great uh, war, World War I, gave way to peace. But, you know, seeing this is just such a great reminder in the middle of the battlefield, what Jesus can bring. And the battlefield that you're on, the battlefield that is, maybe it is with other people. Maybe it's people in your family. Maybe it's in your marriage. Maybe the battlefield is inside. Maybe the war is happening right here in your mind and in your heart. 
Maybe it's a battle um, against an addiction. Whatever it is, I believe Jesus wants to bring peace, lasting peace. Lasting peace, unfading peace. How do we find this as we are searching? In this scripture, Peter gives us a few things, and he quotes the book of Proverbs in that last section, just so you know. I want to just give you these four things and lay them out for you. First is, put others first. <clears throat> Notice that, that Peter says, sympathize with each other and love each other. This is really him putting into words what he saw Jesus do so often. Sympathize with each other and love each other. Out of compassion, look at what's going on and in, in, in the people in your life that maybe you're struggling with the most. Maybe the person that's the most difficult. What if you sympathized with them? Maybe you think, hey, there's a battle going on in them. That's why they're struggling so much. That's why they're having such a hard time. Resist in this, I think the big thought that came to mind was this. Resist the urge to be right. Yeah, right? Come on. All of us really like that feeling of being right in a conversation, in conflict, in your family gatherings, in your home, in your marriage, with your kids, kids, with your parents. Listen, resist the urge to be right. This takes a humility. This takes putting Jesus first, putting others first, thinking about them for the sake of peace, for the sake of Jesus. Second thing is make Jesus the center of attention. Uh, I love what he says. He says, be tenderhearted and humble. Be tenderhearted and humble. I love, this this uh, point, make Jesus the center of attention. I didn't know what to do with be tenderhearted and humble, but I just kept coming back to our Christmas party as a staff. We gathered and um, we celebrated Christmas, but we also celebrated our own Don Greb. And I think I saw, is Don here? Don, are you here? Where are you at? He's way back here in the back. And this was us with Don. Don is retiring uh, from Riverside after 19 years. And, um, you know, uh, as we were all, we all had held up signs of things that we felt like, you know, Don just epitomized so many great attributes of Jesus. And, um, you know, at the very beginning, Pastor David said, you know, this is the thing that probably Don hates the most, which is being the center of attention. I thought, that sounds a lot like Jesus being humble, and um, I just want, we just want to honor Don right now, even in this service, and I just want to just say thank you to Don and, and Linda, and they're not going anywhere. In fact, we're still going to find ways to put him to work, because um, uh, he, he just loves to serve, and so can we give it up for Don Greb? <laughs> So make Jesus the center of attention. The third thing is look to bless someone who doesn't deserve it. Look to bless someone who doesn't deserve it. I love what Peter says here is pay them back with a blessing. Think about this. This is that, um, this is that decision. If you search for peace and maintain it. If there are people in your life that maybe have hurt you in the past Maybe they've disappointed you. And maybe they just haven't done it yet, but it's going to happen. And when that happens, you have a choice to make. It was interesting. I was watching a documentary on uh, Charlie Batch, who um, was one of the best backup quarterbacks ever. Yeah. Grew up here in Pittsburgh. Uh, went to Eastern Michigan. When he was in Eastern Michigan playing quarterback, his sister in Homestead was shot and killed in an alley. And when he came back... For the funeral, 
few, uh, he was sitting on the porch of the funeral home in Homestead with some of uh, the people that he was growing up with in the neighborhood, and they said, we know who did this. We can go take care of this right now. And in that moment, he had a decision. He said he reflected on it, and he said, at that moment, if I would have got up and went and sought out revenge and payback, he said, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you right now. I'd be somewhere else. I had a decision to make, and he said, my mom spoke to me, spoke into my life, and said, you're going back to school. And he said, I made a commitment that, you know, I'm going to go back to school, and I'm going to chase this dream, and then I'm going to come back, and I am going to make a difference. His payback was a blessing, and he has an incredible um, a nonprofit organization where he's helping youth in the inner city, and it's just great because it all came down to this decision. Am I going to get payback? No, I'm going to go bless people. I'm going to make a difference. You can make a difference in your home, in your family, in your neighborhood, in your workplace, especially right now. So if you are dealing with hurt, uh, you're dealing with something that's happened to you in the past, if you're in the middle of something, in a battle right now, pay him back with a blessing. I'm telling you, God wants to bring peace through you. Through you. You're the vessel of peace in your workplace, in your home. So look for that opportunity. When you have the urge for payback, do it with a blessing. See what happens. See what happens. The last thing is, is actually how you find peace with a fight. And there's only one way to do it. And you fight on your knees in prayer. You fight on your knees with prayer. This is indeed uh, the way that Jesus, the night he was arrested, he went to battle in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he went onto his knees and prayed, and he said he sweat almost like drops of blood, praying, knowing what he had to go do. I want to encourage you to begin thinking here as we're concluding 2022. God wants to do great things in this church and in your lives in 2023. And we want to prepare for that. And the way to prepare for that is to fight on our knees. And so we are going to have 21 days of prayer. Um, and um, I think we have a slide for that. First, we have Friday night at the movies on uh, January 6th. This will be Pittsburgh Mills campus. We're going to watch the movie War Room, which is all about prayer. And I want to encourage you to put this on your calendar and be a part of it. This is kind of how we're going to launch out with our 21 days of prayer. So put this in your calendar, Friday night at the movies at the Pittsburgh Mills uh, at our campus there. We're gonna watch that movie together. It will certainly jumpstart you towards prayer. And then 21 days of, of prayer and fasting, January 9th through the 29th. We're gonna have open prayer times on Sunday evening and Tuesday mornings here at this campus. And listen, there are things in your life and in, there's a battle that's waging in your life and in the lives around you. And prayer is a difference maker. And so I want to encourage you to make a plan for prayer. As this scripture says, his ears are open to their prayers. His ears are open to our prayers, but are we talking to him? Let's make a commitment to do that for the sake of peace, unfading peace. As we conclude, uh, there was something about this scripture uh, that I read to you about Peter's moment where he swung the sword and what happened afterwards. And it rings true, and it's, it's something that just, just kept ringing in my heart. Afterwards, after... Peter swings his sword and cuts the man's ear. Jesus answered, no more of this. No more of this. And I think in your life, if you are on a battlefield right now, there's a war going on. And whatever that war is, 
Jesus, I believe, wants to declare this over your heart and life. No more of this. No more of this. I began to just kind of, as I was prayerfully putting this together, I, I, I began to think of what is it, and I asked, you know, Lord, what, what are the things? What's the battlefield for the people here on Sunday morning? And these are the things I jotted down. Conflict. Uncomfortable silence. Separation. Anger. Bitterness. Unforgiveness. Hurtful words. Grief. Depression. Loneliness. Pride. Selfishness. And some of these things, there's, there's even deeper roots. Why you're angry why you're lonely, why you're, you're struggling with depression, you would say there's something else even below that. But I want to pray over this, and as we worship, we will have a couple folks available to pray with you. But I want to pray a prayer over these words. You can bring those words back up. Whatever it is that's on this screen that resonates with you, or if you would say, I'd like to add one. Whatever that thing is, I'm going to pray this prayer, and I'm going to ask that you agree with this prayer. And, and, etch, and when I get to that point, of the, just saying no more of this, that you would speak that in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus, folks. There is peace at his name. Let's pray right now. Lord Jesus, you know the things that people are going through, the things, Lord, that I have named out, conflict, anger, bitterness, addiction, hurtful words, grief, depression, loneliness, these things, Lord, the battlefield that is so real for so many, whether you're right here in the room or you're watching online, right now we pray a prayer and we declare peace. Peace that transcends all understanding. And just as Jesus, in the middle of a battle, said these words, we proclaim them right now. In the name of Jesus, no more of this. In the name of Jesus, no more bitterness. No more anger. No more unforgiveness. No more addiction in the name of Jesus. No more conflict in the name of Jesus. No more uncomfortable silence in, in, in the midst of a family gathering. Lord, we pray for peace. In the name of Jesus, we declare it. In Jesus' name, amen. We will have a couple folks here on the wings, and they're going to go there right now. I want you to see them, and I want you to go see them right now as we begin to worship. Stand, and as you stand and we begin to worship, listen, go pray with someone. Pray with the, your family member uh, during the worship time. Let's believe for peace. Let's worship together.
Amen to that. And so thankful that we get to rejoice and uh, rejoice about peace on earth. Um, just want to remind you of about a, a couple things. First, we have resources for your spiritual journey, your first steps. Uh, if you're taking your step, first steps of following Jesus, I want to encourage you uh, to grab one of those or one of the Bibles that we have for you. Um, also, uh, thank you for your giving. 
Um, we have just been amazed at the generosity, um, and we thank you so much. To remind you how you can give, you can uh, drop your offerings in the buckets here along with your info cards um, if you're a first time guest or updating information. Um, thank you so much. You can also give online. There are different instructions and you can go on the app. It's, it's very easy to do. That's uh, my wife and I give that way through digital uh, giving. So thank you so much. And um, we have a reading plan for you as well this week. So you want to check that out. Um, First and Second Peter, um, you can go on those app notes. And the app notes, if you didn't download that, check that out. There's a link in there, and you can be a part of that reading plan. And as we conclude, um, just want to encourage you to put one of these steps into practice this week. I think it's um, like make a commitment for Monday. Make a commitment to one of these that you'll be mindful of it because I believe that Jesus wants you to be an agent of peace this week. Can I get a good amen? amen? So let's pray for those opportunities right now. Lord, thank you, Jesus, for uh, the peace that transcends all understanding. Thank you so much, Lord, that we find lasting peace in you. And I pray, God, for opportunities to share this peace, to deliver peace, I pray for that in the name of Jesus for each and every person here. And I pray, Lord, that we would seize those moments. Put somebody else first. That we make Jesus the center of attention at a time when we should. It's such a great opportunity as we walk through shopping centers with, with these Christmas hymns blaring through the, the speakers. Let it be, Lord, that people actually see Jesus in us as they hear about it. And we ask this all in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Go with God and go find the one.